Hi, everyone. Welcome into the room. We're going to get started in just a minute. I hope you're all having a great Tuesday. Almost pushed this out to Thursday as much as we want that. <laughs> but yes, we are still, it's still Tuesday all day today. Still got a little while to go, almost, yeah, 12 more hours to go. Hey, look at that. We're going to get started in just a little bit, give everyone time to get into the room. Again, happy Tuesday. So excited you're all here. Five strategies to help your business grow an engaged online audience this summer. Um, now with everything opening back up, it's kind of wild to think that everyone is still engaging online. I mean, no matter what, no matter when, as you can see, I have my phone right beside me. Um, we're constantly on our phones. We're constantly trying to get engaged. We're constantly trying to connect with our friends. We're trying to figure out the latest app, the latest way to get food delivered to us or maybe just a way to see what that latest, you know, hot menu is for that wing restaurant that just opened across the street. You know, speaking of businesses opening up, um, right in my little area here in Austin, Texas, they actually just opened up this great pizza restaurant. Me and my roommate just went, I think like two weeks ago now. And I think they're only open from like Wednesdays until Sunday from four to 11, packed. Like you cannot get in, but it's also like very Instagrammable, um, very picturesque and the food is amazing as well. So I feel like I've done enough talking about like food in Austin because I haven't even eaten yet. So we're going to jump in in just a second. I know you're all itching to get excited and started with this webinar. So I know we're going to get kicked off in just a minute. And again, glad you're all here today on a Tuesday, getting educated, getting that knowledge. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And, you know, feel free to ask questions throughout with whatever time that we have left. You know, we will go over those questions, make sure that you get those answers to those questions. And if not, definitely leave my email address. If you have any social media questions, website questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me, email me. If it takes me a minute to get back to you, <laughs> I promise I will. Um, just probably hung up with doing some other webinars, um, writing some blogs, different things like that. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. Enough of me talking about myself for today. But hey, everyone, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. And welcome to today's webinar um, with Clarion. I'm really excited to be here. Um, one of my favorite people to do webinars with is such a great time to host webinars here. Um, Y'all are all such a very involved audience, engaged audience. But more importantly, I know that I'm um, gonna have some great questions at the end as well. So again, welcome to today's webinar, five strategies to help your business grow an engaged online audience this summer. Now, you know, like we were just saying, and I encourage everyone to have out your phone throughout this webinar as well. You know, looking at your social media profiles, you know, checking to see if you actually have that business account on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and also making sure you have your pages claimed on Yelp and Google. So like I said, we've been going through five strategies to help your business grow an engaged online audience this summer. Um, but summer, you know, is here right now, whether we want to believe it or not, I know still in some states, you're actually getting some snow, so it's kind of wild. <laughs> but um, right here, we're gonna be going over five ways to make sure that you're gonna be getting engaged right now. So understand your audience and meet them where they are. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. You do not have to be on every single social media site there is out there. Um, I know right before this webinar started, we were talking about Clubhouse, and I was like, I've heard about this popular app, but we were just talking about, we're like, it's just a phone call, which, you know, there are some bigger people on that app that, you know, you can definitely talk to, get some great insights and valuable information from and, you know, keep on getting educated. But you definitely want to make sure, you know, just like all these things you're signing up for, you're making sure you're not spreading yourself too thin. So in this section, we're going to really figure out, you know, where you can find your audience, where they are and how you can meet them, you know, actually where they are. After that, we're going to go over, well, actually what makes the most sense and what follows naturally is posting content that's going to encourage those shares, saves, and comments. Um, definitely making sure that we're diving more into this content a little bit more, but more importantly, making sure that you're staying top of mind. Um, after that, we're going to go over how to run a contest. After that, we're going to go over how to use hashtags and influencers to improve discoverability. And I love this section because we're going to actually go over, you know, how to use your hashtags, whether they're branded, um, local, they're trending, but also making sure that you're able to get involved and engaged with your brand ambassadors, your influencers as well. And last but not least, how to respond directly to a crisis. Um, now, I know we were going to be going a little bit more specifically diving deeper into hashtags, but we're definitely going to be touching on hashtags pretty much, I think, through every section, <laughs> except the first one in this webinar. Um, so definitely wanted to make sure you also know how to respond to a crisis. 
And we say, ooh, crisis, bad, negative word. Um, but also think in the sense of responding to those positive reviews as well. I think one big picture that as entrepreneurs and business owners that we miss out on is building up that personal connection online. Your audience members, just because, you know, um, CDC has lifted, you know, those rules and regulations, we're able to, you know, converse with people, we're able to go into businesses and visit with people, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're still not craving that connection as well. So definitely make sure that you're not forgetting about your online presence, you know, during this time and definitely making sure it's growing stronger, bolder, and dare I say it even more fierce. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're leveling up your game, you're boosting your engagement online, and especially you're getting ahead right now, right before summer kicks off. So our first section, understand your audience and meet them where they are. Um, I was talking to my mom the other day. Um, <laughs> she's still, um, I cannot bear to tell her, she thinks that LOL means lots of love. And I'm like, I just can't tell her. So she signs off her little text like LOL. I'm like, I'm laughing, but I'm like, I love you. Lots of love to mom. <laughs> but you definitely want to make sure you're getting engaged with the right audience. You're meeting them where they are. But more importantly, you have your pages claimed, optimized, and let's be honest, they're speaking volumes about your business. So I took this example. And I wanted to make sure that we started out with the platform that everyone, I hope, knows about is Facebook. So I looked at this picture and I was like, oh, this is the other day and I was like, I'm kind of hungry, but I'm like, I'm hoping everyone vibes with this picture as well. And I picked this one for a couple of reasons. Lambert's Downtown Barbecue, which is in Austin, Texas. If any of you are visiting Austin, this is a great place to go. Um, a great happy hour, great food, great drinks, great atmosphere. Now enough about that, but I definitely want you to pay close attention to this profile picture, um, this cover photo, as well as this information. So as you can see right here for their profile picture, it's their logo, Lambert's. Very easy, very simple, very concise. Now, when we look at their cover photos, I love this because with Facebook, you can actually interchange them out. You can do a video, you can have lots of photos, you can have a still photo, you can make it your own. Now with Lambert's Barbecue, they just don't do barbecue great. You know, they actually do live events, they do caterings, they do all types of things. So they definitely wanted to make sure they showcase that as well. And as you can see the arrows on this left-hand side over the mac and cheese, um, you can actually go through the photos, you can see concerts, you can see different venues, um, different things that they actually have at this business. And as you see right here, barbecue always, live music often. And I love that because you know, you're going in here, you're expecting, mm, I'm gonna get some great Texas barbecue, but wait a minute, there's gonna also be a band there. You know, there's gonna be great drinks, great atmosphere. And I love this, they said located in the carefully restored historic Schneider Brothers building. Lambert's serves up inventive barbecue, modern Texas cooking, and carefully prepared, it goes on to a little bit more. Now, one thing that I definitely want you to do as a local business, as an entrepreneur with your Facebook page is encourage your audience members to check in. When people still check into businesses, which people still do, i.e. me, um, you're letting your audience, you're letting your customers, your future, your friends, you know, exactly know where you are. So definitely encourage people to check into your business. Maybe that's 10% off an app. You know, maybe that's um, $2 off a happy hour drink or something like that. But getting more people to check in is only helping you spread that positive organic word of mouth without you having to dip into your pockets and having to boost or pay for advertising as well. Now, of course, we can't mention social media and talking about your customers and where they should be without mentioning Instagram. Now, I love this example from Bar Mercado um, ATL. So Bar Mercado, a Latin American restaurant, open Wednesday through Monday for dine-in and takeout. Text with us, I love that as well. And they also have their link tree right here as well. So a few great things about this Instagram profile. And one thing that I really wanna make sure I'm shouting out here right now is I know in the past you've probably heard, oh, make sure your grid lines up, you know, make sure it's on um, brand it's with your voice. If we worry too much about our grid and if our photos are looking the best and they're aesthetically pleasing, we're gonna really lose that, um, that authenticity that we love so much, that your customers love so much. You know, Bar Mercado, they do have a photographer that's in-house, that's actually one of their um, line cooks. I did a little bit of digging <laughs> and found that out. And so they actually have one of their cooks actually take these great pictures for them. But more importantly, what I love that Bar Mercado does in Atlanta is they actually use um, user-generated content. So think about that. Your diners, they're taking pictures, you know, they're standing on the chairs, they're getting that great aerial shot. They're taking pictures of all their food before they dive in. You're probably thinking, what are they doing? 
you know, when you look right here and you see these tag pictures, that's your customers talking about your business. They're saying great things about you. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using this great content to really help out your business spread organic word of mouth. But this is also an amazing place to be right here as well. And one thing I also want to point out right here where they say text with us, they have this link tree. You know, as a business, as a restaurant, you definitely want to make sure that people are aware of your CTAs or your calls to action. And with Instagram, you can only have that one link, but you can change that link out. So if you want to get a link tree and make sure that you have a lot of valuable links in there, whether that's reservations, catering, you know, for pickup, you know, maybe that's some upcoming events that you have, or maybe it's a link to a donation to a charity that you're really passionate about. Definitely make sure that you utilize your profile as a whole and not just for the surface level of what, you know, we call it out for in articles or how we talk about it in meetings. You know, definitely make sure that you use profiles, you know, um, for, their, for their existence, just like in this example right here with Puesto. Um, Eat Puesto, really big restaurant in California, Mexican artesian kitchen with award-winning tacos, handmade blue corn tortillas, scratch sauces, and perfect margaritas. I mean, I'm in. You know, four o'clock comes around, you know, I want to be over there, proudly Mexican-American family business. This is amazing. One, this is telling me that it's a family-owned business. I know things are made from scratch, so you know the food is going to be amazing. Um, and as you can see, they have a great up-close and personal picture right here of some of their tacos. I can see that handmade blue corn tortilla. You know, I can see the lime right here. You know, all those little details that are carefully put right here in this one picture. This speaks volumes for their business, and also they have a great bio right here as well. So definitely making sure that you're, you are where your customers are, but again, we're not stretching ourselves too thin. Just because we see that another business is on Instagram, Facebook, Yelp, TikTok, and Pinterest, doesn't mean that you as a business owner should be on all of those sites as well. You know, poke around, see what works for you. Maybe Pinterest works better for you than Twitter. You know, maybe Facebook is your site to go to. Lean in on that. Don't do something that's, you know, going to be too out of your league, but more importantly, don't do something that's going to be off brand for you as well. Um, I don't know if, if anyone has seen this. I was reading an article last night and they were talking about, you know, how businesses brand themselves and different things like that. And a lot of businesses are starting to go to you know, that minimalistic feel, which is called blanding. It's, there's an actual word for it. Um, so definitely make sure that you don't want to be bland when it comes to your brand. I know that kind of rhyme. You definitely want to make sure that it speaks volumes about you as authentic and it really shows off your personality. Now, another way that you can be authentic, you can be found, but more importantly, making sure that you are where your customers are legitimately are is Google. You know, and this is that time where I'm hoping you all have your phone. So whether you have an Android or you have an iPhone, you know, that's linked to two different platforms um, for when customers are looking for you. If I have an iPhone, most of my search results are going to come from Yelp. Now, if I have an Android, my search results are coming from Google. So definitely make sure that you have updated your Google My Business account. You know, make sure your current service options, you know, they're up to date. And I love this right here with La Cabana Mexican Restaurant. Delivery, outdoor seating, dine-in, takeout. You definitely want to make sure your audience knows exactly what they're getting into before they get there. I don't know if a lot of you are like me. I look at a menu like two days before I know I'm going to this certain restaurant. If I know I'm going there, sometimes I'll just pop into a place, grab some food and walk out. Um, but if I know I'm going there a couple of days out, you know, I kind of look at that menu. I want to do my research, you know, offerings, you know, do you offer alcohol, cocktails? Is it kid friendly? Can I have my friends there for my birthday? You know, people want to know things like this because this is when they're making their buying decisions and they're deciding if they want to do business with you or go to someone else. And you definitely want to make sure that you are getting found. You know, like I said, use these tools for what they're worth. Most of the things that you can do with Google and Yelp are going to be free for your business. Um, only when you start doing ads and things like that is when money starts to come in. So definitely make sure that you are looking at how you can use Google My Business, Yelp, and use their free tools and making sure that you're getting a leg up on your competition as well. Just like in this with Google Trends tool. You know, search, I search restaurants, Rhode Island, Florida, Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts. I can see all these things about all these different restaurants, um, but more importantly in my area and what I've been to the most. And also more importantly, what you can also figure out is you can see where your customers are coming from. Um, I can see if I've had more out-of-state customers, out-of-town customers, customers <laughs> from maybe two counties over, but really making sure that you're diving a little bit more into the data behind your social media review sites and making sure you're using them. So. When we think about this, you know, I want to say I've probably said this myself, 
don't judge me, I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> we think about posting, we're like, hmm, I wanna post you know, a couple times a week. When you're posting, post as many times as you want to without being aggravating, if you will, that's not the right word I wanted to use, or spamming. You don't wanna be too spammy. Um, definitely make sure when you're posting content, it's gonna be great content. That's gonna help you get found. And more importantly, linking that, linking that to your Yelp, your Google page, to make reservations or to your website as well. So definitely making sure you are where your customers are. You're either on Yelp or on Google, but more importantly, we wanna make sure we have those pages claimed. And as redundant as that may sound, it's something that a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs tend to forget sometimes. We're like, oh, got my social media sites, I'm on TikTok, you know, I got a couple of thousand followers, you know, I'm ready to go. But wait a minute, hold on, people can't find you. So definitely making sure we have those review sites up and ready to go. You know, they're claimed as well. That's the big ticket right there. We can't respond to reviews. We can't um, guide people the way that we want them to if our pages aren't claimed. If we don't claim those review sites, that means they're not technically ours. So definitely making sure that we claim those sites. Once you claim those sites on Yelp and Google, now it's time to actually start brainstorming great content. Remember, we want to start making sure that we're producing content that's quality, not quantity. So when you think about it, you want to make sure you're creating purposeful, engaging content. Um, and think about this a lot. If you're a business that has multiple locations, like for example, the fish market, they have a few locations, but they wanted to make sure this is their San Diego one. So, hey, San Diego, Wednesdays, 310 is going to be your yucky day. So <laughs> we're open 1130 to 430 for takeout and retail market sales. Click this link and get a steaming hot bowl of New England clam chowder. And hey, why not a beer too? Hey, might as well get a beer delivered to you because it will be July before we know it. So you definitely want to make sure that you're springing into this content. I know, but you definitely want to make sure that you're having fun with it as well. Don't just post for the sake of posting. We can all do that. We can make a few mistakes and hit a button. Oh, I just posted a great meme. Really make sure that your content has purpose. More importantly, that you're encouraging people to actually promote your content as well. Having your users promote your content is going to be able to put this in front of more users than it is set out to. So definitely making sure that people are promoting you, they're engaging with you, but they're also conversating with you as well. Now, you also wanna make sure that you're telling a story. I love these posts and I love that on social media we can be our true authentic selves. I hope we all are being our true authentic selves. Um, this is a way that you can really tell your story and more importantly, get engaged with your audience. I don't know if anyone watched The Bachelor. My roommate broke me into that, but it actually ended up being really dramatic and really good. <laughs> um, and I love this example right here with Irene's Austin. They said, The Bachelor has Matt James. We have Kendrick Dial. Come by for free rosés and um, rosé specials all night long. Let's end this dramatic, you know, play on words with Matt, um, season with a bang. And, you know, people are commenting, they're getting engaged, but more importantly, this kind of tells you what kind of business this is. It's a little bit younger. As you can see, we're gonna see mostly females there for The Bachelor, might even see some males there, you know, hey, might bring their boyfriend, might bring, you know, their group of friends with them, but you can definitely tell this is a little bit of a younger vibe as well. And you can get all this right in that picture, in that caption. You know, they're up to date, you know, they're gonna be serving a more millennial Generation Z crowd, but then you look over to the right and we look over at Condor Chocolates. So we always wanna make sure, you know, our captions are short and sweet and to the point, but sometimes you gotta give a little bit more to it, a little bit more context. So did you know that we roast all of our coffee under the name at, you know, Choco Coffee Roasters? It's not chocolate coffee, it's straight up coffee. We source everything from Ecuador, like we do all our um, cacao, and roast it here right in Athens. We offer coffee bags at the cafe plus online and contact us for wholesale options. This is a time where you're letting your customers know exactly what your business is all about. You know, give them a little bit of background story that opens up for you to have more of a conversation online. And more importantly, it gives your audience a little peek behind the scenes as well. I mean, hey, if it's sourced from Ecuador, I might be able to try that. It seems rich, it seems full bodied. It might be a really great coffee to actually wake up to or have it in the middle of the day as an espresso. So definitely making sure that you know you are getting real online. And another way that we can get real is with Instagram stories. How many of us are using Instagram stories right now? You know, let us know in the chat box. You know, if you have questions about Instagram stories, you know, definitely ask those as well. But you definitely want to make sure you're going to get real with Instagram stories. So I wanted to make sure that I included this video in here. This is just me going through Neighborhood Sushi, um, a local sushi business on South Congress here in Austin, Texas. 
So you definitely want to make sure that you don't always have to take these high quality photos, but you do kind of want to get great photos. But you can see they're doing all these four points right here. They're posting about their new products, events, and specials at their restaurant. They're sharing that in the moment content as they're telling you to come by for lunch. Um, they're not incorporating user generated content just yet with this Instagram stories, but I can see right here, they're kind of showing off behind the scenes as well. You know, they're getting that natural light with these great photos and they're letting their audience know, hey, come in for lunch. We're gonna be starting this very soon. So this is when you definitely wanna make sure that you're getting real with Instagram stories and actually using it to your advantage, just like in this example right here with Neighborhood Sushi. And I wanted to show you that video to kind of see, so you can see kind of what your consumers are looking at when they go to look at your stories as well. That's their viewpoint, you know, that's what we look at as well. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're sharing great things with your customers and it's great content as well. And I know we talked about this just a second ago with user-generated content. This is where that is. And you can also do that in your Instagram stories. But if you're not using user-generated content, then you're kind of missing out on that great conversation that you could be having with your customers. If I go to your restaurant and I post about your business, I would definitely hope that you would repost this, if not that same day, at least later on, to use it as you know backup content. When in doubt, use user-generated content. It's gonna save you time, but more importantly, it's gonna also get more of your audience engaged in as well. As a consumer, as a millennial, we love seeing when businesses repost, retweet, regram um, our content, just like in this example with Raul Martinez TV. I could eat this every day. I'd eat Puesto, hashtag secret menu. He just took these four photos, eat Puesto, easily retweeted it. Now, Old Thousand took a little bit more traditional role with using user-generated content. Y'all ever heard of hashtag fried chicken Friday? Yeah, us either, but we're making it a thing. Come and get, come and get you some at our Burnett location. And they actually give credit with the camera right here to ATX Food Chronicles. So as you can see right here, got 18 reactions, got four comments and one share. As a consumer, you're more likely to share and get engaged with comment that's left by a fellow consumer as well. And as a business, I would definitely recommend that you start posting more user-generated content. That's what your users are here to get engaged with. And they're going to also trust more, more user-generated content over branded content as well. So you also want to make sure you're showcasing your values. You want to celebrate your holidays. And I love this because this really goes hand in hand when we're talking about being authentic. When you're really trying to level up and grow your online audience and stay engaged with them, this is the ticket right here. You know, how many of us celebrated National Beer Day, National Pizza? I think it's National Pizza Month or National Burger Month. One of those two are like happening right now. Um, I feel like it's constantly happening all the time, but let's look at these examples and kind of dissect them. So if we're looking at the left um, with Easy Tiger, ATX, I love this um, post for a few reasons. One, they have a dog right here with the pretzel, can't get any cuter. Two, they're hosting a contest. And three, they're celebrating National Pretzel Day. Um, and their pretzels are amazing. Get some of their beer cheese or some of their mustard. And they just opened up like two new locations over the pandemic. It's amazing. Um, really a lot of great space, family friendly. But again, right here, they're crushing it just with this one post. You know, they're hosting a contest. They're letting you know it's National Pretzel Day. And at the same time, um, they're making sure that it's easy to enter as well. So you can comment with your favorite dip for a hot pretzel. I would have said, um, yeah, their beer cheese is really good. It's really phenomenal. Um, want an extra entry? Hey, you can tag a friend. You know, we'll pick one lucky winner. Trade each token for a pretzel anytime you'd like. And then over here on the right, you see Lazarus Brewing, which you cannot sleep on their tacos. You're thinking, a brewery, tacos? We're in Texas. I mean, what more can you get? Um, so happy International Women's Day. I hope we all celebrated this in March. Um, if you didn't, you need to come back and celebrate it again right now. Um, but I love this example. Happy International Women's Day to our BA mother and daughter duo that provides Lazarus with Lazarus with delicious beer and fantastic coffee. We're thankful for them and all of the amazing women out there. 83 reactions, seven comments and two shares. When you're, again, when you're looking to build that engaged audience, be personable, you know, hit on where people want to and that's, you know, tugging at their heartstrings by celebrating holidays, but also showcasing your values at the same time. And both of these businesses do a great job at doing both. Now, we can't talk about growing up an engaged audience if we're not gonna talk about how to get engaged. So I love this example right here from Monday Night Brewery in Atlanta, Georgia. 
They said, if you're not currently looking at beer the way our shift leader Trent is looking at brunch hat, then you probably want to reevaluate your Saturday. I mean, we should all be doing great things with our Saturday. Grab this fruit forward sour pack with the flavors of orange and pineapple now on tap. And then Jake's beer of the day just says that hat. That's all. The, the thing is, they're not even talking about the legitimate hat in this post. They're talking about the actual beer. So Jake's beer of the day says that hat. And Monday Night Brewery says, still a few left in the tap room in our online store. If someone responds to you getting gets engaged with your post, you're not going to just walk the other way. That's rude, one. But two, you definitely want to make sure you're starting up that conversation. People are going to see that and be like, oh, wow, this business is not just a robot. You know, they're actually somebody behind a social media page. And two, they take chances, you know, to get engaged with their audience members online as well. So definitely making sure you're bridging that gap. You're feeding that connection that we all are starving for right now. Now that everything's opening back up, you still can't forget about that connection that you've built so hard up over this past, what, year and a half. You can't just let that fall to the wayside. You definitely have to make sure that connection is so strong going even into the summer as well. And I wanted to talk about tagging. I was gonna dedicate a whole section, but I love that we're talking about it throughout this whole webinar. And Raman Tatsuya does a really excellent job at making sure they're tagging not just with hashtags, but of course, location tags. So to get a location tag, you have to make sure that you have your Facebook page set up and have that location with that Facebook page because Instagram and Facebook are connected. So that's how you can actually make sure that you have a location geo tag like they do right here. So with this post, they do a few things. They use industry hashtags, they use brand hashtags, and they also use location hashtags as well. So they're using three important ways to make sure you're building a bigger community, but also three really solid ways to make sure they're also staying engaged online with their audience members. So cocktails, cocktails of Instagram, colorful cocktails, those are gonna be industry hashtags, but also popular hashtags that people are using. And again, you gotta, it's almost like mixing low and high with um, clothes. You have to mix in the popular with the local and the trending and the industry. So you have to kind of mix a few of them together, but you have to be consistent with how you use them as well. And more importantly, they have to also match the caption and also the picture. There's a lot going on, but once you do this a lot and you uh, make sure that you have a system down, it's gonna be like no one left the back of your hand. So happy hour, bartender, cocktail, craft cocktails, those are gonna be some more industry um, hashtags that we're gonna be using as well, as well as some popular ones. Um, but then we're gonna look into some localized hashtags too. So Austin drinks, drink Austin. Those are gonna be your local ones. And then we also have your branded hashtags too. So ramen Tatsuya, RTY Slurp, Tatsuya, Tatsuya Family, ramen and noodles are gonna be more of your popular hashtags and what's in my bowl. So definitely making sure you're mixing up your hashtags, you're having fun with them, but more importantly, you're using them the right way and you're being consistent with them. You can't be great if you're not gonna, you know, at least try and to attempt to do this every day. And, um, you know, there are going to be some little bumps along the way as well. So definitely making sure you're not hoping you start using hashtags, the money's going to start flowing in. It takes time to build up that rapport. It takes time to build up that audience. So definitely making sure that you're not expecting those results in five minutes. It might take, you know, two weeks, two months, maybe a year. It just really has to depend on your audience, how consistently you're using them and also how you're using them with your posting your pictures. Run a contest. I'm not telling you to run away. <laughs> I'm actually telling you to run a contest. And the reason why contests are so profitable, they're engaging, and they're fun for your audience members is because you're not only getting engaged with your current customers, you're also getting engaged with your future customers as well. And just like in that example that we saw not too long ago about people entering that contest um, for the pretzel day at um, Easy Tiger, it's also gonna help you tag people. It's gonna get people talking. It's gonna get them coming back to your page to say, hey, when's that next contest happening? And yeah, you don't wanna be the business that always hosts contests. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're hosting them for the right reasons. So in this example right here, they're saying, do you wanna go on a shopping spree? If so, like our page and comment below by tagging your shopping buddy to be entered to win a $250 Target gift card. So with businesses, you definitely wanna make sure you're giving out a prize that's relevant to your business. Target gift cards don't hurt. Amazon gift cards don't hurt. You know, just a Visa gift card to any local business, which I do love as well when people do that. I'm like, yes, you're giving, yes, give back to the community, not just your business. 
Um, but definitely making sure you're doing that as well. Or I know most chambers of commerce have like a local business gift certificate that you can use. Um, so maybe try and you know, get engaged with your local chamber of commerce as well, making sure they have some of your gift cards. Um, but when you're doing a contest, a giveaway or a raffle, like I said, they're here to make sure that you're attracting those new customers, but also those current customers. And it's gonna be easier for you to get those customers when you're holding contests just like these. And more importantly, if they're gonna be relevant to your business and it's gonna have a relevant prize. One thing that I love about contests, but it's also hard for, for business owners, is I don't want you to fall into that slump and you'll see this tip right here. Um, you know, if you experience a large bump in your followers after your, you know, your contest, you know, let's say you were maybe had like 400 followers or something, and then you're up to like 1,000, 1,500, don't let them get to your page and it's just contest and promotions and sales. Definitely make sure there's something behind that content. Definitely make sure there's photos of your staff, there's videos, there's engaging stories. Because when your audience members, they come to that page, yes, they wanna enter your contest, but hey, that's also a new follower. You definitely wanna make sure you're getting them in that as well. So definitely making sure you're not just hosting contests and your page isn't just full of promotions and sales. It also has some great content to back it up too. Now, I love this example from Hotel Cremont, um, 12 days of Christmas, and you can do this honestly with any month. You really can. Um, one month that I feel like people didn't really capitalize on was March and leading up to St. Patrick's Day, the look of the Irish, the rainbow. There's so many holidays um, that we forget about. And I encourage you all, like even during this webinar right now to look up restaurant holidays for the month of, what month are we in, May? And you know, look up restaurant holidays for the month of June. I think what May is National Barbecue Month, I wanna say. Um, there's a lot of like random holidays in, in my brain that I know because of this role, um, but definitely making sure that you're capitalizing on them and you're also making sure that they work for your business and not against you. And also making sure you're giving out those relevant prizes too. So I know that section went a little bit fast, but definitely wanna make sure that when you're thinking about using your content strategy to grow that engaged audience, you know, you're not just stopping at making sure you have your review sites and your social media sites up. You're not just, you know, pumping the brakes when you have great content up and you're getting those great reactions or you're hosting contests, you're getting those new followers or you're getting some of those repeat customers to come back. Really, really make sure that you're using your hashtags, but you're also using brand influencers, your ambassadors, and also your customers that come to your business more than they would like to say you know, they're gonna help improve your discoverability, but they're also gonna help improve your word of mouth and also help market your business as well. I know we looked at Condor chocolates a little bit earlier today, but I wanted to bring them back up because they do a great, great job at making sure their hashtag is where it should be. So with Condor chocolates, this business that is in almost at Austin, Texas, in Athens, Georgia, they said being a bar, Ecuadorian factory and cafe, Monday to Wednesday, nine to six, Thursday to Saturday, nine to eight, and Sunday, 11 to six. One thing that I do love when businesses do is they have their hours in their bio, because sometimes you're not gonna immediately go, I'm gonna go to their Yelp page. I'm gonna go to their Google page. Sometimes, I forget who I was talking to, they're telling me about a restaurant. I'm like, what's their Instagram handle? And they're like, you're not gonna just Google or Yelp it? And I'm like, no, I'm just gonna look at their Instagram page. I could not find them, and the business name was different. So. In hindsight, make sure all your handles, all that stuff is the same if they can be, but also definitely making sure that you do have all your information up here, just like Ecuador, just like Ecuador chocolates, Condor chocolates has up here. And as you can see, they're using their profile as a whole with this hashtag and using a unique branded hashtag as well. Hashtag chocolate tells a story. It reminds me of every kiss begins with K, um, like with K jewelers, like that little jingle. I'm not gonna sing it, I almost just did. <laughs> But every chocolate tells, every chocolate, chocolate tells a story is unique because one, they're a chocolate company. Two, chocolate does tell a story, whether you get it for your mom for Mother's Day or you got it when you first met your fiance, or you know, maybe you had it when you just got that promotion. You know, so chocolate has a meaning for everyone. It also has some significance behind it for every person as well. So I love that they got unique. I love they try to tug at your heartstrings a little bit as well with this unique branded hashtag. Now, with hashtags, as we've seen in some similar posts and right here, right now, you definitely wanna make sure that you're using them. You're using them consistently, and more importantly, you're mixing it up of how you use them. Whether that's branded hashtags that you have on your post, 
trending hashtags or localized hashtags that we just saw as well, like ATX drinks, um, ATX happy hour, those things, they're gonna be your localized hashtags. So one thing I wanted to do is definitely make sure that we're concentrating on how to work with influencers, but also how to make sure that we're working with them in the right context as well. Some people are like, ah, oh, influencers, brand ambassadors, money, have to give them out free things. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It all depends on, do you have a relationship? Remember, I was talking about building up that connection. We're talking about building up an engaged audience. Connection, that's like the root for this webinar today is you have to have that connection. Um, when you're looking to partner with influencers, you're looking to build up an ambassador program, never just get any Joe Schmo off the street. It doesn't work. Um, you wanna make sure that the people that you are choosing for your ambassador program, the people that you are looking to work with as an influencer, they've been to your business before, they've eaten your food. Um, maybe they've been there a couple of times, maybe they've been there a handful of times, maybe they've been there every single day since you've opened. But you definitely wanna make sure that if you're gonna tell your story through another person, you wanna make sure it's gonna be authentic as possible. You also wanna make sure that you might wanna offer free products and lots of promotion. Promotion on your end is easy. You're gonna have that influencer do the work. You just have to make sure you're plugging in that same content onto your social media sites. Um, I was watching behind the scenes with this actual influencer and she was saying, you know, it's great to be an influencer. You know, it's a lot of fun. She's like the one downfall is whenever she goes out to eat, all of her food gets cold because she's always snapping shots. And that's why most of the time um, when she gets there is she's like, maybe I'm wasting a lot of money, but she'll always order what they always prepare for her. So it's never like she's getting free food. She'll always order what they put out for her because she wants to actually eat that food and she'll eat it fresh and then she'll donate the food that she wasn't able to eat to a shelter or like somebody like as she's in passing. So I actually followed her and actually um, she spoke at an event about a couple of years ago, got to um, hear her speak, really great person. If you ever get a chance to follow her blog or check it out, definitely go do so. But really making sure that you're looking at how you can partner with these influencers, how you can partner with these brand ambassadors and make it work for your business and not against you. So when you're looking for influencers, when you're looking for brand ambassadors, remember, we don't wanna just go with any Joe Schmo off the street. We wanna make sure it's authentic. We wanna make sure they're able to tell our story. And more importantly, we wanna make sure that it's gonna be good for us too. You know, that we don't wanna to be too cocky and be like, oh, like I'm being a little bit selfish and this is all about me in the end. But at the end of the day, if this ambassador partnership or this influencer partnership doesn't work out, it kind of falls on you because you definitely want to make sure they're in line with your brand they speak the language that you would and you want to make sure that message is the same across so we're going to look at the three r's um, especially at godaddy social of what we look at when we look to partner with influencers is their reach relevancy and relationship now their reach i'm not going to lie to you that doesn't really matter somebody could have 50 followers 500 followers 5,000, 5 million at the end of the day it all matters and falls on these last two r's Relevancy and relationship. Is it relevant content the influencer is putting out? Are they relevant to your audience? Does this partnership make sense? And the relationship, do they have a quality relationship with their followers? Is it quality engagement that they're building on their social sites? You know, look through their followers. Is it a lot of bots? Is it people they might've bought? You know, things like that. So you definitely wanna make sure you're not just saying, oh, this person has 92,000 followers. Great person to come, you know, build up my brand. And then they get there and they're like, well, we need this, this, and this. And you see no comments, you see no engagement on your post. You know, you definitely wanna make sure you're checking out an influencer exactly for what they're worth. If you see people just posting, you no, know, just things or just liking things, you know, dig a little bit deeper, do some homework, making sure you're checking into that influencer or that brand ambassador. And you also wanna make sure, you know, you're putting out great pictures as well. And you're gonna see, um, some kind of behind the scenes of what we saw a little bit earlier with Neighborhood Sushi and how they use their Instagram stories. We're gonna actually um, see some things that um, Taste of Cocoa actually did as well. And I've been to this restaurant. I'm gonna be honest, their interest, is, their interest is in the back of the restaurant. It took me 20 minutes to find this place. I was meeting a friend there for dinner and <laughs> I walked in front and I was like, all right, I see you, walked around back and I was like, how do I find this door? And if you don't know where you're looking for at first, you're gonna miss it. But I like how it's in the actual back of the business. You have to go through the back. It's really cool. Um, so let's just kind of take a look at how she did that, but also how she works with these restaurants as well. 
So as you can see, I wanted to make sure I went down to her post. Um, same post that I just took that still from, and this is just Neighborhood Sushi. Um, she's going through, thank you for joining us. And as you can see, this is her walking to the restaurant. No one's there. They usually do media um, previews and things like this. And as you can see, you see me right over here on the right scrolling. Um, this is what you want when you partner with an influencer. You want this type of engagement. You want people commenting on those posts because that means that this influencer, this brand ambassador has actually done their job. They actually made sure they made the post fun. It was on message, it was on brand. And you know, it's right in line for what you want as well. So definitely making sure that you're, nail you're nailing that pitch. But also at the same time, this business is thinking long-term with partnering with her. They're not just thinking about, hmm, we did this one post with her, that's it. Because she's a micro-influencer, and but she does a lot of great work for the Austin community. And so you definitely wanna make sure that you're looking at how you can partner with someone for the long term down the road, not just for one post, but for the long term and how they can actually benefit your community. Look at influencers that give back. That's a big thing. You know, is your business passionate about something? Maybe you have an influencer that lines up with those passions, making sure you know you're picking out those influencers that way as well, or those brand ambassadors. And diving into our last section, um, respond directly to a crisis. I know we've covered a lot today, but definitely wanna make sure that we're going over these things. And at the end, of course, with whatever time that we have for questions, bring those questions in. Cannot wait to dive into those and answer them for you. Um, so start thinking about those now. So respond to positive reviews. I'm gonna be honest here. I do look at reviews when I'm going to a business. You know, and some might think, well, I've heard, you know, the sketcher it is on the outside, the better the food is on the inside. Sometimes that is very true. Sometimes that is the best barbecue off the bone, beautiful food. But you definitely wanna make sure you're also not just trusting a business because they have just five stars straight. Mm -mm. Um, the average star rating actually is a 4.7. So while you know, we may be shooting for the stars and getting that perfect five star rating, you know, no one's perfect. You know, embrace those imperfections. And you know, that's what they are, they're imperfections. This is your staff, this is you as a business owner, an entrepreneur getting feedback on what you could be doing better and how to make that next visit, you know, a, a home run. So I look at reviews, positive, negative as feedback. And that's what you want to do. When my boss gives me feedback, I'm like, all right, you know, that's great. What can I do? How can I go from there? As an entrepreneur, I know that's a little bit harder to digest, but that's what you want. You definitely want to make sure that if people are leaving you this kind of feedback, that's just what it is, it's feedback. And you can only respond in the best way that you can. So. When we're responding to feedback, let's look at this example from Daryl Lynn. Five stars, 37 photos, 15 check-ins, so you know it's a legit person. Bob's is always a great place for food and service. All right, okay. Two things already shouting out. Now that COVID-19 restrictions have loosened, there are many options for dining. They have indoor dining, outside patio dining, car hop, um, on some nights drive through and pick up. I ate outside in their makeshift outdoor dining that they did a good job making look pleasant. You know, he's living in all the deets, all the facts about this business. What stood out for me this time around was the service. Again, I sat outside and Juan did a great job in helping my table out if we needed anything. He came at the right times during our meal and courteous. It was also nice they had um, a portable terminal with them to expedite paying the bill. One thing I also want us to look at is Useful, funny, and cool. These are really, really important things. Your customers are looking at those and you as a business owner should be saying, hey, was this useful to my customers? Was this cool? You know, do people think it was funny? And when you're responding back to those customers, definitely making sure that you're being um, authentic, you're being personable. So we'll be sure to let Juan truly make, we'll, we'll be sure to let Juan truly um, know that you made this visit stand out from the others with his incredible service, Daryl Lynn. Tongue twister right there. One thing I wanted to call out right here is how the general manager, Mike, is using Daryl Lynn. So using that person's name. Whether you want to join us at the car hop or on the patio, we'd love to welcome you back for another excellent visit soon. So definitely making sure that you're being personal online, you're addressing the issue at hand or the positive feedback, and you're rolling with it right there. And also using those breadcrumbs that Daryl Lynn put in that response too. So now, not all reviews are gonna be positive, not all feedback is gonna be positive. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're looking at responding to all of your reviews. You're, and you're looking at these key three things. You're gonna apologize, you're gonna defend without being offensive. Sometimes it's hard to do, it's called tact. I've had to learn that the hard way. Um, and invite them back. So let's see what Chris had to say about this business. 
Terrible for food and service. Okay, total 180 of what we just saw. Waited 25 minutes for just our salads after repeating several times to bring them for our entrees. They brought everything together. Food was mediocre at best. Would not recommend this place. Okay, Chris. Um, drove from Venice and was a waste of my time. Way too many other places to go around here for better food and service. Chris was just not having it that day. Clearly, he needs to, you know, take a breather, maybe come back, um, you know, and try this place again. So let's actually see what this business had to say back to Chris. I feel like I'm also a game show host, like, and what's up next? But, you know, I, you know, we definitely want to make sure we're breaking this down. You know, I'm sorry you didn't feel like your meal was worth the trip, Chris. I love that he brought that full circle and was like, we know that you traveled. We sorry that you did not feel it was worth your trip, but boom. You know, they also put in Chris's name. It's a shame we didn't follow your request to bring the salads out before the meal. One thing that he mentioned right there, hitting it right on the nail. And I do apologize for this mistake. So you've got to, he's apologized a few times already right here. That said, I can assure you, our team is normally very helpful and attentive. Defending without being offensive. You got to bring that tact in. Um, assure you, our team is, is normally very helpful and attentive. And I hope we get another chance to show you that in the future. Joe R. of the Lighthouse Grill. Simple, easy, straight to the point. But as you can see, there's like a lot of, all right, we're going to apologize, but we also need to defend um, without being offensive. And we're also going to make sure that we invite you back. So we think about those, those memes that we see and like, what's a polite and courteous way to say this in an email? This is a polite and courteous way to defend, apologize, invite them back when you have a negative review, a one-star review. So definitely making sure that you're not just letting your audience, you know, just write these reviews, respond to every single review. And sometimes you might not want to. Don't respond to them right away. You know, go have your lunch, go take a walk, go do some things for you, and then respond back to that review. Now, I know we've gone over a lot of great information, but honestly, we're at, I know, one of my favorite parts of the webinar, and that's when we start going into questions. So really quickly, we went over how to understand your audience and meet them where they are. We then went over how to post that content that's going to encourage share, saves, and comments, but also making sure that you're posting just great, excellent content and making sure that you're using content that's going to tell your story. You can be authentic, but you're also leaning into how you can share that overall wonderful experience online. After that, we went over how to run a contest, why it's important, and why contests should not just be for your current customers, but how they can also benefit your future customers as well. Remember, we're here to bridge that connection of when your customers pay that bill, pay that tab, or they order from you and they, and they get delivery. We want to make sure that experience, that connection is still alive when they look at your social media sites. We also went over how to use hashtags and brand ambassadors and influencers to improve that discoverability. You've got to use hashtags to make sure that your posts are being found, but more importantly, how your consumers can also talk about your business in a great way. User-generated content but also using influencers and brand ambassadors to help spread that organic word of mouth and also making sure that they have a great and deep understanding of your business and your brand and how y'all can both effectively communicate that together. And last but not least, responding directly to a crisis, whether that is, you know, food was late to a delivery or they had a great experience and they're going to come back every day next week. So you better watch out. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you're responding to all of your reviews. Remember, it's feedback. And at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just feedback. Somebody was in the moment, they were heated, and you know you can do something better by just responding to that review and making that customer feel, oh, heard. That's all you're doing. You're making that person feel heard. And when we do that, that's making that connection stronger. So I know I've gone over a lot of great information, um, but I definitely wanna make sure that I'm giving y'all time to also throw in some questions as well. So now is that time, throw in your questions, Let's see what you got, and we're going to go ahead and start answering those questions right now. Jeffrey, you are amazing as always. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Your introduction just killed me, and I'm I'm sure I speak for all of us when we say that you just always provide the most incredible information. So you have a ton of questions here. Um, okay. The first of which is, what are some ways to find important keywords that people are searching to help our online presence? Oh, love this. So great kickoff question. Um, what are what are some ways to find those keywords, even hashtags? You know, um, I want us to start using that in our keyword search too. Do your homework, number one. You've got to do your homework. So, let's we'll say for Pete's sake, restaurant. Go on, pull out your phone. Let's go on Instagram. 
right now, and let's say we're a restaurant, right? And let's say we're in Austin, Texas. Um, I'm just gonna do hashtag ATX restaurants. And I know ATX restaurants is used 13.1 um, thousand times. So 13,100 times um, that this hashtag has been used. So that might be a great popular hashtag for me to use in my local area. Um, and this is how you can do some great keyword research and also hashtag research as well. But really looking at businesses that are around you that are similar to you, but also making sure you're doing your homework and setting your competition and kind of seeing where people are coming from as well. And that's gonna be a really great insight of like what words to use, keywords to use to help you be discovered and found, but also great ways to also incorporate that into your hashtag strategy as well. Awesome. And what applications work well for facilitating a contest on Instagram? Okay, so this is gonna sound very, very random, very crazy. Um, those examples that I showed you are some great, excellent ways to set up your contest. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, there are some great tools that you can use out there. There's one that I've actually used. I'm gonna pull that up right now. Um, it's a spin wheel contest tool. And they choose them at random. So the picker wheel, um, it's spin the wheel to decide a random choice. I'm not gonna lie, that's one of my top things I love using um, just because it does it at random. I've also followed influencers that were like, hey, I'm about to do it old school and write everyone's name down and put it in a fishbowl. However you see it best, but I do suggest using the picker wheel to pick a winner. Um, you just have to upload the names. You can do that easily in a spreadsheet um, or create a Google form and have people fill that out as well. But the easiest ways to run a contest is having people tag a person in it, follow your business. Two easy ways to enter. Once you start getting people to tag other people, put on your stories, you kind of start losing interest and it makes it harder for people to do. So I always recommend having people tag your business or tag a friend or follow your business. Those are like two easy, simple things that you can do. And more importantly, it's gonna be easy on your customers as well. You don't want them to get too overwhelmed with too many things to do just to enter one contest. Okay, and do you have any suggestions on the best way to clean, quote unquote, information on Google Business and how to avoid customers making change changes on the information? Yes, um, so first and foremost, you've got to claim that page. And that might be the reason of why that's happening is because you just haven't had time to claim that page. It's simple, it's easy, just type in how to claim my Google, Google My Business listing and it's just a simple phone call. They'll send a postcard, it'll take a little bit, and then you just follow the directions on that postcard. Um, but definitely making sure your page is claimed, but also making sure you're taking some time out to monitor those pages as well. Because for instance, if I go to your Google My Business page and it's not claimed, I can divert and direct everything to my email. And essentially I'm that business owner just because I took that initiative and just claimed everything myself. So that's probably what's going on. Someone's just claimed it and they're editing and doing those things. Or it could be, dare I say, disgruntled employee, maybe. So those things you do have to watch out for. They are real, they do happen. Um, but definitely make sure that you're taking that first necessary step and cleaning that page. And if you've already done that, then maybe this is a disgruntled employee that might still have access to that account. So as an add-on to that, um, but actually mm -hmm. asked by someone else, um, how do you get a Google My Business um, account without a fixed address if you're an online business? So we actually um, talked about this not too long ago in another webinar. And um, one thing that I do suggest is, let's say that you're an online business and um, don't judge me anyone, but you can always use your lawyer's address like your or where you've got your LLC from. You can always use that or get a PO box. So lawyer's address where you've got your LLC from or a PO box, those are always, those will always work or your home address, but home address is too personal. We don't want people showing up at your house. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fair. So we do have a couple of other questions, but just before um, we get to them, a lot of people are asking for your contact information. Yeah, So definitely. I'll let you you tell it and people can hopefully write it down. Okay, and I'll, and I'll go slow, I promise. Um, I have to look at this really quick. It's G as in Jeffrey, D as in Dave, S as in Sam, webinars with an S, so E, E, 
W-E-B-I-N-A-R-S at GoDaddy.com. So GDS webinars at GoDaddy.com. And that'll, that'll link you directly to me. Um, and we'll be able to answer those questions, give you up blog sites, things like that as well. Awesome. Hopefully everyone captured that. And I will write it in the chat as well. And um, I'll repeat that definitely at the end too, if anyone needs me to. Awesome. Um, okay, let's see. What do we have next? Um, for quality imagery, do you think a business should hire a photographer or videographer? Okay, that can go both ways. Um, one, I would definitely look at your budget and see if I was just looking at this and I'll get into this. Um, one of my friends, I don't have any kids. Um, she is a baby photographer, maternity photographer. And just one session is seven hundred dollars. I was like, oh, I was like, that's expensive. Um, because I was gonna gift one of my friends that's having a baby a photo session. I was like, oh, not doing that. Mm -mm. Um, so it can be pricey, but it's gonna also depend on if you're a restaurant, I say make everything on your menu, have people come in, and maybe that's a media day that you do. Um, a lot of restaurants um start to do that if you have a brand brand ambassadors, influencers, have a media day where you invite all of your influencers, your brand ambassadors to try out your new menu or your spring menu. And this is one way to get around that hiring a photographer or something, even though you do have to give out free product and food. Invite all those people to come, they're gonna take pictures, they're gonna upload it and give guides about your restaurant saying, oh, this is like a sushi restaurant you guys need to try out. These are some pictures that I took when I went to my latest visit. So definitely making sure that you're thinking about that part is if you have influencers in your city or your town, and there's a good bit of them that come to your business, have a media day. They're gonna capture all the photos that you want, even photos that you won't even think of. And they're gonna be like, yeah, we can give them to you. Like as long as you start doing these media dates and help promote their, their blog as well. The other part of this is if you're gonna hire a photographer, um, look for a professional one. But if you have a local college in your town, also look for an intern as well. Um, I was that intern um, looking to get my foot in the door that some, a restaurant helped me. And so that's always very helpful if you're looking for, you know, not expensive photographer, interns are always looking for work. But if you are, do hire that professional videographer, do hire that photographer. But my advice to you is I would make everything on the menu and get as many photos as you can and making sure they're photos that you can use over and over again and try to get different angles as well, like getting in the chair and getting overhead shots, aerial shots, um, right in line with the food you know, getting candid shots of your audience and your actual staff. And that's the other thing is when we think about high resolution photos and quality content, we tend to forget about our staff. And I remember being that staff member, like when this might date me, with Instagram first started, you know, like we were all posting on Instagram for our businesses, not, you know, hiring people to do so. So get your staff involved, you know, do a staff member of the week. And if you're a restaurant, I suggest doing this as well highlight their favorite menu item, their favorite drink item, and you know maybe something that they love doing in their spare time. It's gonna let your users see more of your menu, get them more excited about your drinks, and more importantly, have that personal connection with that staff member when they walk in. So there's a lot of different avenues that you can take with photos, but I definitely suggest looking at all your resources, even somebody that's already on staff getting paid. Awesome, so we have time for one more, but I'm gonna give you a two-parter. Um, okay. How, uh, should I be on every social media platform mm -hmm. and or which social media platforms do you find gets the most reach for restaurants? Okay. I, I said this in the beginning and y'all might have, you might have missed it, which is A-OK. -okay. Um, you do not have to be on every single social media platform. I, I learned this growing up. I was stretching myself too thin and I was like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. The same thing applies now and especially with social media. Don't take on more than you can handle. Um, if I'm being honest, two platforms that I think get great education, great engagement for restaurants, Facebook and Instagram. That's not a downplay Twitter, that's not a downplay TikTok, any of these other platforms, but Facebook is going to connect you with an audience that's pretty much everyone, like my parents, younger people, everyone. But then on Instagram, it's going to be your Generation Z millennials that are looking at hardcore, um, like, like, like high quality graphics um and making sure you know they're looking at great videos as well so that's the thing about those two platforms is on facebook 
you can get away with like posting a not so decent photo. But on Instagram, people are like, what is this? This is a little bit blurry. But also, it's a great chance for you to also broaden that audience member as well. So definitely look at those two platforms, especially for restaurants, Instagram and Facebook, but also look at how you can use them to their advantages. Yeah, they're under the same umbrella, but you also want to make sure you're using Facebook to connect more, and you're also using Instagram to show off the experience more. Yes, we want to paint the experience across all of our social sites, but Instagram is really where you're going to paint that picture for your customers. You know, from like the videos you saw from um, Tates of Coco or from the Instagram stories that I showed you, you're going to paint that experience one way or another, and Instagram is a perfect platform to do so. Awesome. Well, we are at the end of our time. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you again so much for presenting, and thank you to GoDaddy for providing this webinar as well. Um, again, your email, just to confirm, is G, D as in dog, S as in Sam, webinars at GoDaddy.com. Mm -hmm. GDS webinars at GoDaddy.com. That is correct. That is right. Fantastic. We also want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, a recording will be made available in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to Jeffrey or um, Clarion Events. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a fantastic day. Thanks, y'all.